Hey everyone, today we're gonna sculpt an Arzeros. No time for a fancy intro though, we've got a lot of ground to cover. But first, Capcom. Bloodlust Incarnate. Really? What are you doing? This guy? Come on. Come on. Just like last time, we're gonna start off with a simple sketch. Nothing too detailed, mind you, just something to get the general outline of what I'm attempting to go for. Now the pose I'm going for today is somewhat of a sitting pose. I didn't really want to do him on all fours Phrasing. or uh, doing a crazy action pose. I kind of just wanted him to be relaxed and enjoying some honey. And because of that, the skeleton is very, very simple. Just really one big long straight line and a couple wires for the arms. Nothing too crazy. So let's just build up this armature. I'm going to take out a bunch of foil and just crumple it up into three big balls. I mainly want to get an idea of the main sections of the body, the head, the chest, and the butt area. Once I have those, I'm just going to stick them together. Well, after I apply the armature wire, that is. Just going to roll out a small bit, cut it to size. Then I'm going to take this sharp tool and poke some holes in the foil so I can just snake the wire through it. It went mostly well. Eventually, I do make it through the midsection, and then I apply the head and the bottom section as well. It's a pretty tight fit, looking good so far. But the last thing I want is then to start shifting around and falling apart. So I'm going to take a trick out of the old bricklayer's handbook, and I'm going to apply some mortar. It's going to take some bacon bond and some clay and shove it in the recessed areas. It will work basically like a cement and hold things together. Well, after I bake it, that is. I then apply the outer layer of clay until I have something like a brown snowman. It's fairly stable, it's flat on the bottom like I want it to be because he's sitting after all. Yeah, this worked out. So uh, let me just get this baked up and we'll be right back. Oh by the way, the best thing about this being flat, I don't need a stand. It should remain upright on its own without any major issues. So that's always good. Now that it's all baked up and everything's settled and cooled down, I'm gonna apply the base layer of Super Sculpey. Again, this is to allow other layers of Super Sculpey, the detail stuff, to stick onto it much easier when it's uncured. So I'm just gonna roll out a nice thin piece and just apply it all over this thing. Then I smooth everything out, and now I'm gonna start applying the legs. Not using an armature here, these aren't for support. This is just gonna be a free-floating structure. I didn't find it all that necessary because this is the image that I'm using as a reference. I think you can see what I'm going for now a little bit better. Then I add some surface level detail and definition, and then I do the same exact thing to the other leg. At this point, my reference is starting to really come through. I'm liking where this is heading. Now I've added plenty of definition to both legs, but something obviously is missing. His big fat gut. So I'm starting to layer on a bunch of big thick pieces of clay. Not going for anything super detailed, just basic shapes. This is all for like an underlying muscle structure, I guess you could say. It's all gonna get covered up eventually, smoothed into each other, and in time it should start taking shape. I do the same thing with the chest area too. And before long, this is what I end up with. A jolly old fat bear torso. Now you'll notice these squiggly lines. That's me trying to replicate the uh, matted fur texture of his, well, fur. Um, I wasn't sure how this was gonna go. It was really just a test. It ended up working out really well, but I'm not gonna do it until later. Uh, but yeah, this is what I end up going with and it works out. I then move up to the chest area where the uh, arms kind of meet the rest of the body. And I know what this looks like. Please grow up everybody. We'll be through this soon enough. Once that's done, I'm gonna connect the chest area to the upper part of the head, forming his neck area. Now, in retrospect, I probably should have chopped this bit off. At this point, it was starting to look a little oversized and I wasn't sure how it was gonna end up. Hey, phrasing! But I decided to soldier through. I figured I could thin it out kind of with a, a bigger head. You know, his head is very small in this. Every reference that I looked at looks slightly different, so, um, I don't know. I just wanted to see how this would go. 
we're gonna give it a shot. Other than that though, the proportions are starting to come out pretty okay. I'm happy with it so far. But at this point, I really need to start adding some texture detail. So I'm gonna take that silicone shaper from before and I'm gonna continue that matted fur look. I do this all over the lower portion of the body. This took forever. It ended up working out though. It's a nice effect. I'm really happy with how that ended up. I did it also on the legs and around half of the butt area. At this point, the outer edges were starting to dry up because this sculpture has been out for a while. It was making the fur kind of difficult to apply. So I ended up rubbing on some rubbing alcohol to kind of loosen things up a little bit. When I brought the tool back, things went a lot smoother. And just like that, it's about halfway detailed. Pretty okay. Not bad. But there's still more to be done. First thing I do is I add that little tuft of fur that he has on his chest and between his pecs. I felt like if I didn't do this now, I'd completely forget about it. So I got it out of the way. Then I took this crumpled up ball of foil and made a texture stamp. After I tested it out in this spare piece of clay, I really liked the effect that I got from it. So I'm gonna use this to add skin texture all over the exposed skin areas that don't get fur. It's a simple but tedious process. I just dab it all over vigorously till I get as much definition as I want. The end result looks something along the lines of Freddy Krueger's face, but uh, but yeah, this is basically what I want. Next, I just wanna add a border of the fur to kind of differentiate between where the fur and the skin meet. I don't know if I needed to do this in the end, but I'm glad I did it. Now I move on to the ends of the legs. I'm gonna texture those up real quick, and then I'm gonna take another silicone shaper tool and I'm gonna add little scaly plates all over them. And eventually, I get this. Now I wanted there to be a lot of randomness here. I really wasn't concerned with everything looking the same. I didn't want that. But what I do want, eventually, are feet. So I'm gonna take some wire and I'm just gonna shove it up one of them, because this is the one that's gonna need support. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. And with that, at this point, I really don't wanna risk messing things up by overhandling it. There's gonna be too much going on, so we're gonna bake it. Now that it's baked, all of the detail work I did is locked into place. I don't have to worry about it anymore. This is great. Now the most logical place for me to go from here is probably the arms. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm just gonna mark where the arms are gonna go, drill out a hole or two, and insert some armature wire at the appropriate length. Keep in mind, this is not the appropriate length, but this is basically preparation for the final pose. I think you can see what I'm going for now. Now I'm gonna add some heft to those arms. I'm just gonna roll up a bunch of foil under those wires until my berry buddy has some nice spiffy robot arms. Then I do a reverse of that scene from T2. Oh my God. Now listen to me very carefully. Nice. Next, I connect the arms to the rest of the body with these uh, crudely made shoulders. Just gonna shove a whole bunch of clay in there and smooth it all out and texture it up until it looks a little something like this. But now I gotta perform some surgery. See, these arms are way too long. It occurred to me that uh, those those pounder things on the end of his arms, you know, the, those Popeye arms he's got, they're gonna be way too much of a pain to work on while it's actually attached to the body. So I'm just gonna chop off a bunch and do them on the side. And this is basically what I'm left with. So I roll up a couple Vienna sausages, and I think these will do the trick nicely. Well, after I add some detail and make them look more like hands, that is. Once that's done, I'm gonna take some more little bits of clay and use them to make the armor plating that goes around the arms. And eventually it looks like this. I don't know about you, but when I look at this, I'm reminded of the thing from the Fantastic Four, but I digress. And of course I had to make two of them. They look similar enough and I think I can get away with it. Now I'm gonna add small armature wires to act as support for the spikes and claws. And by the end of this, it ends up looking like some kind of weird pin cushion. Then I use one of my tools to hollow out the inside a bit, just so I can fit it on a little bit easier once it's cooked. But for now, I have to test and see what this actually will end up looking like, and uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with this. This test went pretty well. And here's what it's eventually going to look like. Kinda. I think you can see what I'm going for a little bit more clearly now, but I clearly can't leave it like this, so this is very temporary. First things first, I gotta cook this thing to lock those arm bits into place. And now that those are done, I can work on the hands some more. 
This is the part I was telling you about that would be a nightmare if these were attached to the body beforehand. See, each one of those wires has a spike attached to it, and this took a lot of time and a lot of patience until I got this as the end result. This looks really cool, very happy with how this turned out, and even better, they actually look good when they're viewed next to the body, so that's a win right there. So I went ahead and did the same thing with the other arm. I got them pretty close to identical actually, I was kind of shocked at that. But now I gotta cook them because I really don't want to do those spikes again. So let me put them in the oven, I'll be right back. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on the feet. Now luckily for me, Arzros is kind of a nondescript looking foot, so it doesn't have to have the most intricate detail. I just kind of smush a bunch of clay together until it gets a vague foot shape, cut up the toes, and I'm gonna leave it as it is, just add some texture and we're good. Then, just like the hands, I add some armature wire in for the nails, and uh, yeah, they're pretty much good for now. And then, sadly off camera because it was 3am and I forgot to hit play, I added claws to the hands. Note to self, no sculpting at 3am anymore. I then baked them one more time to seal everything in. Then I did the same thing with the feet. Oh yeah, and I also added little toe beans, which I'm told is something people would want to hear me say for some reason. And uh... Small price to pay if I just hate myself, right? Good. Moving on. Now that the arms are all cooked up, it's time to attach them to the body once and for all. Just gonna add some bacon bond and some loose clay, seal them up together, dab on some detail, and the overall look is fairly seamless actually. This is both a lot easier and a lot harder than I thought it would be. As strange as that might sound, that's just how I feel though, go with it. And again, I did the exact same thing with the other arm. Somehow this one went easier. Not sure why, I thought this was going to be the hard one. Go figure. And this is what I'm left with. Looks pretty cool so far. I'm really happy with how this is coming out. And what's more, it looks pretty good from multiple angles too. I think I got the girth just right. Don't take that out of context, please. Phrasing BOOM! <clears throat> Inappropriate. Now, I think it's time for another bake. While that's in the oven, I'm gonna start working on the head sculpt. I'm gonna smush up some clay and start with the bottom jaw, just like I did last time. Just gonna scrape out the insides a little bit and start adding some teeth with this interesting new method I decided to try, where I would lay out a strip of clay and then with one of my shaper tools, just kinda jab it in there and, well, essentially sculpt them out of it. You know, as opposed to making each individual tooth, which would have been a lot more difficult and taken a lot more time, the end result was something I was very happy with. It worked out. Then I start on the upper jaw, see how it lines up. I'm liking the shape there. But then I had a thought. See, there's a lot more detail on the head of an Azuros than there is on the Velocidrone that I did, and because of that, with all these teeth, I don't want to mess anything up. So I'm going to finish the upper jaw, teeth and all, and then just bake it and put all the other details on top of it so I don't have to worry, which allowed me to make this fairly easily. It would have been a nightmare to get to this point if I didn't cook the teeth when I did. I'm very happy I decided to do that. Definitely the right move. Eventually, the sculpt is almost done. I've pretty much gotten the basic shape I'm after now, and it was all fairly worry-free. I only had to make sure I didn't snap any of those teeth off, but if I did, I could have just glued them on. No big deal. Here's what the two halves look like together. Not bad. And then I went and attached it to the body. Now, I didn't get this all on camera. This was quite the process and I really didn't feel like showing all of it. There was a lot of trial and error here. It all goes back to the uh, really bulbous neck that I talked about earlier. I should have lopped it off when I had a chance, but I decided to just power through it. But I got into a position that I think works, and I'm kind of happy with it. So happy, in fact, that I'm going to start texturing it up. It all matches up pretty seamlessly now, so it's time to add some extra details to round it all out. First things first, I'm going to roll out some long clay triangles. Then I cut some really thin strips of clay, and I lay them over the triangles in sort of a, a roof shingle-like pattern. And I do this over and over until I get something like this. Now these are going to act as the spine armor that connects the back to the top of the head. I'm just going to lay them on there like this, get them sort of situated where I think they look good, following the direction of the head, obviously. I connected them with some bacon bond, by the way, very important, they would not stay without it. Then I continued with some smaller triangles leading more towards the face. 
and I did the shingles even more. It's starting to look more Arzuros-like, if you ask me. Now, if you're wondering why they're so big and deep, we'll get to that. Bear with me for a second. And no, that was not meant to be a pun. That was completely an accident. Then I'm going to make some ears. Nothing really to say there, just poking some holes with some tools I have. Then I get started on the beard main thing. I'm not really sure what you call it. But once it's done, I definitely see Arzuros now. And I think it adds a lot to the overall shape and size of the head. I then added some more hair to the top of the head, and I started experimenting with hair techniques. We'll get into this in just a little bit, but this is a nice precursor for what's about to come. Then I apply a metric ton of bacon bond, and I add the rest of the mane to the body. I have to make damn sure this thing is solid and stays exactly where I need it. Now I'm going to take that scraper tool you saw earlier, and I'm just going to start scoring the hell out of this thing, making as many bristly, sharp looking hairs as I can until I end up with a pattern that looks like this. I'm very happy with how this came out. This also took a lot of time, but it was so much fun to do. I just loved the effect. Now the butt needs some fur. It's going to apply some more bacon bond. I'm going to slap a whole bunch of new clay down there. And I'm going to use that silicone shaper tool for that matted hair pattern again. And this is what I ended up with. Then I went up and added a little bit more bulk to the mane. Again, I wanted to minimize as much of that bulbous neck as I could. This was the best way I think I was able to accomplish it. Overall, it ended up making him look a lot more imposing. So it's a win-win. And there you go. Just like that, the sculpt is complete. He's fully detailed and ready to go in the oven one last time. Anyway, it's finally done. Let's get to painting. I decided not to go with the airbrush this time. There were too many small detail areas like that hair, and I had no faith that I would actually get it covered with the airbrush. So I decided just to use a paintbrush, and it worked out really well. I really like how the paint brings out all the details that I got, especially from that foil stamp that I used. It ended up looking really cool on the skin. Now I'm going to color the mane. Now if you know this monster, you're going to be looking at this going, why is it brown? Trust me, it'll make sense in a little bit. Just go with it for now. I had to make sure I got into every little nook and cranny there, so I must have done about three or four coats of this stuff. And by the end, it ended up looking a lot darker than I had intended, which ended up being exactly what I was looking for. Again, we'll get there. Then I used a slightly lighter brown for the exposed skin areas and the arms. It doesn't look like it on camera, but trust me, the difference in hand was much bigger. And you'll see why I did this in a bit. I then apply a nice dark olive green to the rest of the fur. And I use the same shade on the stomach and the leg areas. It's starting to come together now. Then I paint the mouth and I add some blue to the head and the spine area too. And just like that, the full body base coat is now complete. All in all, I probably put about three coats of everything on there. My coverage was very spotty at first, I'm not really sure what I did wrong, but, you know, but the extra coats really helped out in the end, so I'm not complaining. Now, it's time to start detailing. I start by dry brushing a tannish gray to the exposed skin areas. This really brought out all that texture work from the foil stamp, and it went a long way in making it look like this thing has actual, real skin. Then I applied a nice dulled down yellow for the armor plating on the arms. Made sure not to get in the crevices. The end result looks really nice. I tried not to be too hard with it because I wanted it to be very rough. Then I applied a nice light lime green to the stomach and a slightly darker but still lighter green to the rest of the fur. I gotta say, I'm really digging the depth I was able to get out of the fur. I wasn't sure about that silicone shaper tool before, but it worked wonders. I'll be using this again in the future for sure. Then I did the feet much like I did the arms. And now for the fun part. I'm gonna paint up the mane. I start with a nice bright yellow, only trying to get the tips, the highlights basically, so the brown still comes through. And I'm just gonna apply it all over. It looks really flat for now, but that's by design. 
I'm eventually going to go over it again with some beige and a very little bit of light brown. I didn't get it all on film because there was just too much to be done, but this is the end result. I am incredibly happy with how this came out. You may have noticed that I added some extra detail on the spines and on the face. I basically just used the same exact color I used for the base coat on that fur and ended up working out. Quick side note, I did paint the eyes red. Don't know where the footage went, I thought I hit play, guess I didn't, but you'll see it eventually. Other than that, only thing left to do is to paint up the butt, the same green that I used for the rest of the fur, and we are done. All in all, I really like how this came out. The neck area that I was worried about from the start, it ended up not being too big of an issue. Uh, the fur ended up looking really cool. Everything really worked out well. I'm very surprised I was able to pull this off. The amount of detail work that went into this put that Velocidrome from last time to shame. Just like last time, I'm gonna paint up a base, black on the top, gold on the edges, mod podge it and seal it, and get his big green butt glued down. And a few minutes later, beautiful. And with that, Arzuros is complete. I'm really proud of how this came out. The amount of detail I was able to put into this thing, far and away more than I was expecting. I thought this was gonna be an easy one going in, actually. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I'm glad it's over, but it was a ton of fun to put together. And with that, on to some glamour shots. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Tell me what you guys thought about it in the comments. If you'd like to see more, be sure to like that smash button, share the video, subscribe, all that jazz. And while you're at it, leave me some comments down below telling me what you'd like to see me do next, or in the future. That about does it for this quest. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, happy sculpting.